Look at question number two, right? So question number two says, uh, two such as QTSPIM and MOAS are used to simulate uh, MIPS um, instruction set architecture, right? Um, so a, a assembler instructions are assembled into the equivalent machine code instructions before they can be executed. So you're told here explicitly, say use the MIPS reference data card on the Moodle to look up uh, op codes and funk codes, right? For you to answer the questions that follow. So if you look at 2.1 here, so for each of the following MIPS instructions provide the equivalent machine code representation. They're pretty straightforward, right? So they're telling you for the instruction, uh, and I, dollar sign 10, dollar sign zero. Can you provide us with the machine code equivalent of this instruction? Can we? Yes, sir. Yeah. What process do we follow, right? What did we say we do, right? How do we, how do we come up with a, a machine code representation? By machine code representation, we're saying, can you show us or can you tell us the pattern of ones and zeros associated with this instruction? What, 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 are, what are the, you don't have to, to, to work it out right now, but what are the steps, right? That's, that's an important question to ask is, what steps do you follow for you to decode this instruction? Do you understand this? Yes, sir. Yeah, so what? what so yeah, you're just supposed, are you just supposed to give the answers in bits or what? So like you... So when we, when we say machine code representation, yeah, when we say machine code representation, this is code name for binary, right? So what you're being asked here is, can you give us the equivalent, the ones and zeros associated with this instruction? We expect you to give us 32 of them, right? But what specific sequence of events is it, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, so you know what pattern do we do we expect to get from here? You know, the tr the trick here is in 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 identifying the steps that you follow for you to decode this instruction. This is what we are trying to find out, right? What what are the steps? What do we do? Oh, uh, I'm just supposed to like check for the what's this? Like uh, the code, like in hexadecimal for add i, which is uh. Like, I don't know the kind of instruction cheese. Oh, uh, it's the I instruction format. Like, uh, like oh, instruction for oh, it's the I instruction format. Okay. Okay. What, well, what, so the, the first step is uh, somebody saying, uh, I'm going to pause here right now. There's, there's different, so there's different ways of approaching this question, right? Um, you, the, the one approach could be what has been suggested where you, you start looking up, uh, you start by looking up the, let's say the code for add I or something. But what, what, I, what I would recommend is you first of all sit and uh, you ask yourself a simple question. What, what instruction type is this, right? So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna I'll, I'll come back to the person that responded to this and then we'll follow through with their steps. But as step one for me, what I would do is I would say, identify type of instruction, right? The reason you want to identify the type of instruction is because the order of bit segments is in part determined by the type of instruction, right? Uh, is this add i or, or it's add i? So we see that add i is actually an i format instruction, right? If this is an i format instruction, we know the pattern associated with an I format instruction, right? We have an opcode, we have a source register, we have a target register, and then we have an immediate value. Understand this? We know that the opcode is going to be represented using eight, six bits. This source register is going to be represented using five bits. A target Register is going to be represented using five bits. The immediate value is going to be represented using 16 bits. Once you figure this out, then you can get to the stage where you start, you, you start working through these different portions, right? So you say the opcode, what is the opcode? Well, um, you, you, you start decoding, right? 
you can start decoding by, by working through these different segments as well, right? So you say, what is the opcode? What is RS? What is RT? And then what is IMM? Yeah? Opcode is a part uh, that the previous speaker had highlighted, right? So you look up, you have been given ad and you've been taught to use the MIPS reference card, right? If you go to the MIPS reference card and then you look for ad i, for instance, what you will notice is that um, ad i here is associated with it's associated with the hexadecimal value eight. So what we're being told here is that ad i is eight hex. If it's eight hex, we know that eight hex is essentially the same as now because because in the exam and in fact in all assessments you're allowed to use calculators, the thinking here is that uh, uh, I mean, unless if the question in the exam, maybe you'll be told to show your working or something, you'd have to 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 show us how exactly you go about um, you go about uh, uh, converting eight hex into binary. This is easy, right? Using using six bit representation, we 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 see that each hex symbol is ideally represented by a nibble, right? Four bits, right? So we expect to uh, have something like uh, one's place, two, two's place, four's place, eight's place. Right? So this is this is our eight. Add i. This is eight, right? Agreed? One's place, two's place, four's place, eight's place. This is eight in binary. Eight hex into base two is one zero zero zero. But because the opcode is represented using six bits, you pad this, right? with two zeros to have six. So we see that the opcode is, is that, right? And then you come to the source. Now I forgot, I missed a, a part here where uh, I, sh I should have also reminded myself to say, well, what is the, the way that you represent uh, this instruction in assembler? Because it's different, right? It's opcode followed by RRT followed by RS followed by IMM, right? So essentially, what we mean here is that, look at this, opcode is add i. So if you swap them, then it's wrong. Yeah, it's gonna be wrong. It would be wrong, actually. And this is why you have to be very careful here. We're solving puzzles, I guess, here. You have to be very careful with this. And I mentioned this when we did the discussion about this, that that uh, it's, it's tempting for you to swap these, right? The order is different in the MIPS assembler program itself and also in the way that these bits are ordered, right? In the 32, in the 32 bits that you're working with. So the opcode is add i. RS is, what is RS? It's the one, two, three. One, two, three. RS is dollar sign zero. What is RT? RT is dollar sign 10. What is the immediate value? Negative 2019. Right? So you do this, and then for RS, do the same thing, right? Essentially, uh, what you're being asked here is for you to convert this register value into its equivalent binary. All you do is you convert 0 base 10 into, uh, into binary, right? Because the register numbers, this is the thing here. The instruction here, if you look at the reference card, this instruction is represented in hex, hex, right? These are hex values here. Yeah? But the register numbers, these are decimal numbers. So once we come to dollar sign zero, essentially what we're saying is convert zero base, base 10 to base two. It's zero, but we are converting it using five bit representation. So it's just five zeros. Yeah, you come to you come to RT. RT is uh, hexadecimal. I mean, it's decimal value ten. 
So the question here, this part of the question is asking you, can you convert 10 base 10 into base 2? Right? This is simple, right? Using 5-bit representation. What is 10? 10 is 8 plus 2. 1's place, 2's place, 4's place, 8's place. Right? Yeah? So this is your 10. 8 plus 2. Using 5-bit representation. Do you understand this? And then you come to three, four. You come to, to negative 2019 because you know, we, we had a very lengthy discussion about this, that uh, MIPS represents values using two's complement. You know that this negative 2019 is supposed to be, is supposed to be uh, uh, converted to binary using two's complement. So what is the heuristic for converting negative numbers into binary? Could somebody remind us? But you first of all, oh. sorry, you first write there it the the number in uh, in its positive form, and then like when you change it to binary, then you do the one's complement, then after one's complement you add the one, then uh, yeah that's the answer. Okay, slow down here so that we're on the same page here. I'm not as fast as you here. Not everybody's as fast as you. So you're saying we, we take the positive number, which is 2019, and then what do so you then, do to this? Yes, change it to binary. Okay. okay, listen, because in the interest of time here, I'll just get 2019, and then I'll say change it to binary. I get, um, I get this. Yes, what do we do next? So now... You are going to to get one's complement of that number. One's complement of of this number. Okay. How do we yeah. do that? You flip the bits. You flip the bits. Yeah. So you okay. flip it. Then when you flip the bits, you add a one to the bit that you flip to the one's complement. Okay, so we will flip the bits zero zero. Oof. It's, I don't want to. So I'm going to flip these bits by by having a number here and then I say zero zero. One two three. Zero 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 zero. So this is one complement. And then what do we do next? And then add a one. Okay, and then add one. One complement. If we add one here, we don't have to, to just beat about the bush. Adding one here just replace the last zero with a one, right? Um, and then what do we do next? And then that's the answer. Okay. So like you, for the final answer, you just add all the bits together. This is, uh, so uh, yeah, I have a question for you guys, right? I have a question you for you. The, Sorry? Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Uh, not really adding, but putting them together. All the answers that you found in... Uh, okay, binary. okay. All right, that's, that's fine. I have a question for you. For one's complement, two's complement, and uh, what the hell is that? Oh, sorry, what, what else is that? Uh, sign magnitude. What value of the sign bit is used to represent a positive number? Zero. Zero. Okay, so zero is positive and one is negative, right? Yeah. What does yes, this sir. say? What does this say about what you've just converted? Do you think this is correct? Uh, no, that's sir. a positive <laughs> answer. The one was supposed to be in front. So what, what do you think we what what did you do wrong? What did we do wrong for us to get a wrong answer like this? Uh, just add the negative sign, that's all. <laughs> You just forgot this negative sign. Yeah, no, I don't know. You, don't follow me. Yeah. you must think, right? You must think. The, the immediate value is represented using 16 bits. Think. It's represented using 16 bit representation. When we were at this stage here for 2019, we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. This is what you are supposed to do. We just forgot, sir. Yes, add more yes. bits. Okay, fine. It's, it's, it's quite sad that we forgot, really, to be honest. But so what you are supposed to do here is you are supposed to do this, right? 
and then you flip the bits, right? Zero, zero, one, sorry, one, two, three. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Five, one, two, three, four, five. This is what you were supposed to do. And then when you add a one, you'd come here and you'd have this. Very important, right? So already here, I, I, at least I have a fair enough good idea that what I've, what I've just um, decoded is actually the correct thing because it's a negative number, right? The one as the leftmost bit, unlike what you had before. And then of course, uh, what you do as a final step, yeah, is you just piece the different things together, right? You piece them together by reminding yourself, say, well, I must first of all get the op code. I'll come here. I must uh, uh, call this step what? I don't know. Step three. Kiss everything together or something. So you come here and you say, what is the op code? You come up here. Oh, op code is this. I'll get this. Put it here. What is... Uh, RS, okay, RS is uh, the zeros here. Put them here. What is RT? Uh, RT is this. I'll copy paste it here. What is immediate value? It's here. And then I'll, sorry, it's here. And then I'll copy paste it here. So the answer, in fact, is, is this. I've been changing yeah. the, the arrangement. I'm sorry? I've been changing the yeah. arrangement. Or uh, if we swap the, the, the arrangement and somebody called 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 it, then uh, would would swap RT and RS. But uh, so here's the thing: what do we start with? Observe for I format instruction op code RS RT immediate value, right? Op code RS RT immediate value. What is RS? What is RS? Zero. <laughs> what is what is RT? Ten. So I, I don't know. Well, maybe I've swapped them. I don't know. But but here's the thing, right? I'm I'm, I'm transitioning to a different class here, right? Um, life of a teacher. Um, but observe, if I come here and I just create a simple program, yeah, because we can do the, a quick test here, and you know, I'll have text. Uh, uh, I'll have uh, the global main, and then I'll have the main here, um, and then I'll say add. I'll just copy paste the instruction from here. Yeah, come up here, copy it. Put it here, right? I'll save this. Uh, I'll call this testing, decode, decoding or something. Dot ASM, yeah. And then I will load it into my Mipsus. Uh, I'm, I'll load it using QtStream and then try and see if I can run this here. 